My parents bought two kiwi plants, and they asked a few weeks ago if I could build them a trellis for them. So this made a, a perfect opportunity to make a Mother's Day gift for my mom. We decided a simple form that would allow the two kiwi plants to grow up each side of the trellis and sort of meet in the middle and make a structure. It sounds like kiwi plants, once they grow for a bit, will actually form their own self-sustaining structure and they don't need the trellis anymore. So the sort of big idea for the trellis was to make something that would rot away over time and leave the plants making their own sort of natural structure. So what that meant for me is to make something where I wouldn't use any metal fasteners. Everything would be glued up joints. So it would only really be wood making up the, the structure. So we decided to make it out of simple two-by material as this won't, won't necessarily last very long. It's not very expensive and it's easy to work with. So I was back to jointing and planing two-by material. <laughs> I figured I'd use two-by-sixes for the two arches and legs, and I would cut up two-by-fours to make the, the cross pieces. So I got that ready by lightly jointing and planing. I began to think while doing all the planing, it would really help to have someone else catch the pieces as they come out. So I had my mom help with that. And yes, it's more than twice as fast to have someone else pull the pieces out of the planer, as you can feed the planer as fast as the pieces will go in. To make the arches, I wanted to attach a bunch of shorter 2x6 segments to make the, the curve of the arches. So I needed to cut an angle into the 2x6 pieces. I'm basically making big segments for a segmented ring. I was wondering about how I was going to hold these as I glued them together and I just continued down the path of the segmented ring and decided I could glue the arches up as a ring and just not glue the joints that I wanted to come apart and I would have my two arches made from each half of the ring. So I could lay out all of those pieces and it made a ring and worked. Then I can cut a mortise and a tenon into each of the segmented pieces. This will help give it a little more strength than just gluing the end grain together of the, of the segments. Now I need a mortise and a tenon that's perpendicular to the end of the segment, but that means that it's at an angle to the side of the segments. Um, so I have it all set up. And I figured this was something that mom could, could do. <laughs> so I got it all set up and I could have her cut the mortises and that went just fine so i i usually bring it you know instead of doing a little bit at a time i bring it all the way over and then take off a little bit depth wise then we started in on the tenons and those are a little trickier just because there's a little less control by the panna router i was saying it's a little bit like Cutting the mortises is like driving a train, and cutting the tenons is like driving a car. And she didn't really like cutting the tenons as much, so I ended up doing those. I did a couple, and in thinking about it, I wondered if it would help if I removed a little bit of the material before I put it on the panel router. So I set up my dado and the table saw, and I could cut a rabbit on each side of the segment. Then routing out the tenon wouldn't mean removing quite as much material. And it definitely helped, but whether it's really worth the time of removing that material first is questionable. <laughs> this got me thinking, too, that the joint between the segments could, could be done with a dado set on the table saw. Making two rabbits on one end and a dado on the other end of each segment and making the joint that way and I think that would work. Now I could glue up the two arches within the ring. So I did one side first, 
Now my ring has 18 segments, but my arches only have eight. So the arches actually only need 16 in total. So I have two extra that are just in the ring as spacers. And what this will mean is that the legs will be at an angle and won't be vertical. You can glue up the other side. So I let the first side dry for, I don't know, half an hour or something like that. And then I came back and did the other side. And I can kind of walk around and sort of tap the joints into place. But the, the big strap I can use as a band clamp to kind of hold everything together. As the glue set up on the ring, I could cut the strips for the cross pieces, which was ripping two by fours in half. <laughs> So I made lots and lots of sticks. Now I can take my two arches apart. And that seemed to have worked. I wanted to cut the actual curve of the arch into my segmented piece. I wanted to, to cut off the, the points of my segmented arch. So I screwed the arch down to the CNC table. And I could cut the arch shape from the segmented piece. This took a little bit of setup getting the shape in the right place and making sure it was going to hit my segmented piece in the right places. But once I had that set up and once it was cut, doing the mortises for the cross pieces was straightforward. I can unscrew that from the CNC table. I had to do two of these and I was thinking I would mirror the second one because that's how it would be in reality. But I decided I really didn't need to because they were exactly the same. So I screwed it to the table in the same place by drilling a hole through the first one into the second one and using those holes to attach the second arch into the table on the table in the same place. Then it was a matter of just running the, the CNC again. Now I need to work on the legs. Two of them need a mortise and two of them need a tenon because of the way the mortise and tenons work in the arch. So I can fit those together. Because I made the arch a little thinner than the original two by six, I had to cut the legs down just a little bit. And th this seemed like this would be easier to just do on the table saw instead of doing it on the CNC machine and the whole glue up with the legs and the arch wouldn't fit on the CNC bed. And I figured out where the mortises would go in the legs, and I cut those. Once I did one, the other three went really quickly. I can mark for where I wanna cut the width of the legs so that the sides of the legs will be flush with the arch. And it just has to be pretty close. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's just lumber. <laughs> so once I figure out the width, I can rip the legs to that width. I wanted to cut the angle that the legs were going to be at into the, the bottom of the legs so that the, the bottom of the legs would be somewhat level to the, to the ground. I tried sanding the arch on the drum sander and this worked, but it wasn't easy, and I'm not sure this is really the way to do it. I think just doing it with the, with the palm sander worked, worked better. Then I could glue the legs in place, and I almost glued this one on backwards, which would have been really bad, because the mortises would be on the wrong, the wrong side. Now to hold this in place, I just ran a long clamp from the top of the arch down to the the bottom. And I, I, I sort of put a beam in place to, to kind of mimic the ground. And I didn't make it too tight. I didn't want to break the arch. I just wanted to hold those two joints kind of together. And again, I can, I can just kind of tap it a little bit to get the, the joints to be tight. I had to put a tenon at the end of all of the cross pieces. I just set up and just did that all at once. And it went pretty fast. It took about half an hour. It's big glue-up day, and I brought Mom back over to the shop. 
I was thinking all along that I would glue it up in the shop, but it would be difficult to get the full glued together piece out of the shop. So I decided we should glue it up outside. So I brought all the parts out in front of the shop and I really wouldn't have been able to do this without another person. These pieces are now too big to, to handle by one person. So first we glued the cross pieces in on one side and this went pretty fast. Then we brought the other half out. We kind of came up with a plan because we were going to have to put the glue in and then everything was going to have to happen really quickly and perfectly. So we put the glue in all of the mortises and we picked up the side and put it on the other cross pieces and amazingly everything went together. I hadn't done a dry fit on this so I was hoping the way that I had made the two halves was actually going to work. <laughs> we had it all glued together and then realized that the clamps weren't going to fit underneath the lower section so we had to raise everything up. But that was somewhat minor but it actually went really well as, as one of the, the biggest glue ups I've ever done. And I let that dry overnight. And luckily we, we've had kind of a, a long dry spell, so there was no rain and I could just leave everything outside. Then the next day we could install it. I was hoping it was going to fit in the back of the truck. It should as I was aiming towards eight feet of width at the bottom and that should fit in the bed of my truck. And I was hoping it wasn't going to be too heavy <laughs> and it actually wasn't too bad. I could put one end in the truck and get it over the tailgate then lift the other end up and just slide the whole piece into the bed. I was thinking I was gonna to have to leave the tailgate down, but it fit perfectly in the back of the bed. It's exactly eight feet. That was luck. <laughs> then I just made a sort of a, a cross bracing to, to hold it in place and that worked just fine. And we're off to grandmother's house. It's kind of everything in reverse to get it out. I just slid it out and put it down and we got dad out to help move it. And it just fit between the, the bushes, getting it into the, into the front yard. And we, we kind of set it in place and figured out approximately where the, the feet were gonna go. My mom wanted the view of the trellis to be perpendicular to the trellis from the kitchen so that the, the view of the trellis would frame the corner of the garden. So we, we spent some time getting that view exactly right. Then my idea for how to set it on the ground was to put a little paver stone under each foot and I wanted to get those level. I made sort of a, a scrap wood level extension that would let me figure out whether those, those paver stones were level to each other. So that took some fiddling and some digging to get that right. On the second try, leveling, everything was spot on. That was nice. Then we could move it into place. And I wanted to get the paver stones to be sort of at the edge of the feet. I don't know if this is how this is supposed to be done, but my idea was to pound a metal stake into the ground next to the paver stone and next to the, the foot of the trellis. I could then screw the stake to the trellis and that would help hold the structure down. It sits in place just fine. I was afraid of it getting blown over in the wind. So I wanted to actually hold it down to the ground. I used a pair of vice grips to rotate the stake so that the holes would be in the right place. And that all went just fine. And it's in place. We just need to get the plants in now. 
it looks really good and I hope it weathers well. There's no finish on it and there's no metal fasteners except for the, the screws and the stakes at the bottom. I figure once the kiwi plants are big enough and structurally sound enough, we can take those stakes out. Happy Mother's Day.